questions on, you know, anything in terms of like finances and things of that sort, please feel free to. Um, if we have any questions in general outside of this, how can we reach you guys? Are you guys on social media? Do you guys do mail? Or do you guys well, do you well, 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 I know, you like troll you all the time. I love the rest of you guys. How can you, you can reach find, you guys? You can find us on his page. Okay, good. Oh, yeah. So, my Instagram is under the millennials next door. Um, there's actually my business cards on the table in that room if you need it. And no, mainly just follow me on Instagram. That's what most people do nowadays. Good content. Yeah, I'm good. Look at me. Yeah, new more videos. Oh. Wow. So, sorry, I came in a little bit late, but it was like a huge discussion about credit. So, if anyone here has a credit score, Lower than 750, I'm hosting an event on Friday night at 7 o'clock. If you want more information about how to work on your credit and improve it and improve your lifestyle, you can get with me after the event and I'll have some information for you. Say that. Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. So I guess at what point is it a good idea to start getting like a financial advisor or financial coach? Because it's something I've started to explore. But when you're telling me $200 a month and I'm already trying to get my stuff together, that's like a lot of money when it's like I could be saving this money or paying this money towards my debt. What's kind of like the benefit of getting one or at what point should I really start considering? Um, I think you can take a financial coach and you take financial advisor. Uh, so I'm a financial coach. I charge about 150 per month. Uh, basically, what I tell people is, you know, finances is very simple. You know, you need to save more, pay down debt, invest more. You know what you need to do. The question is, are you actually going to do it? So that's my job as a coach. So if I find out you are not actually doing it, then it might be worth you looking into it. So I relate this to like a personal fitness trainer. I know I need to do more sales to get my eight pack back, but I haven't been doing it. So I should really look into hiring a trainer just to make sure I'm actually getting my results done. I would say that's what you want to really look at personally. Yeah, I would say it depends on depends on a lot of factors. So it really depends on what you got to think about is yes, you are putting up two hundred dollars, but it's really again like depending on who you're working with and the quality of advisor or coach that you're working with. It's really an investment. And to Andre's point. Um, like a personal trainer, right? So I can go to the gym, I know how to use the gym, I know how to use the machines, I know how to do the workouts, I know how to do sets, I know reps, I know all that kind of stuff. But am I doing it every day? No, more, more likely than not. So really that um, having a financial coach is gonna give you that accountability, $200, I know that's a number you put out there. I mean, you just have to, there are people out there who could probably work with your your um your budget some people do it based on the percentage of assets you have those are like the really you should do that for like high net worth individuals you have other people who do it on a monthly basis you have people who have programs out there where you probably don't even you may not depending on your situation you may know that like you may be an individual like i guess going back to that gym example right so you may be an individual who may need like a p90x where you could just watch a video and do the workout so you may not need someone to be on you every day can hang you up so it all depends I would also say, talk to me afterwards, and we can I can talk to you about what that would look like to, to work with me. So I usually take people that are a little bit further along than uh, what you guys were talking about. So I'll do a lot of the coaching aspect and helping people along, uh, but I usually have a $2,500 minimum, which is finance planning for a year. Um, and I also have investment management, where I actually handle your investments for you. Uh, and that program starts at $100,000. So you're probably wondering, like, how do I get $100,000? So it's most often times through your 401k. So most people will save, and their 401k, save, save, save. And then after five years or so, you're like, oh, I'm tired of this job. I'm going to go to a new job. Well, your 401k, oftentimes you can roll that 401k into your new 401k. But when you do that, you're missing out on a lot of opportunities and oftentimes you're paying higher fees in your 401k than you would if you were to roll it over and use a financial advisor. So a lot of people will say, hey, I left my job, I have $150,000, I'd like for you to help me manage it. So then they'll do what we call a rollover. And they'll roll it from the 401k into an IRA and I can help them manage it. So that's usually the easiest way for somebody to become a $100,000 client. Otherwise, it's just people who have saved in other accounts. 
Do you have anything that's liquid? So if I have this hundred thousand dollars, but I want to wait until the next real estate deal come along, do you have somewhere I could just park it? Because in the bank you're getting less than one percent. Yeah, absolutely. What so, kind of? Go ahead. Yeah, right now for people who want to keep their money liquid, I'm using Schwab Value Advantage. So it's something that you can buy on Charles Schwab's platform if you have any accounts there. It's paying about two and a half percent. So. Do they do corporate accounts? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll talk to you afterwards. Yeah, I'll talk to you after this. And um, just to add on real quick, when it comes to just the concept of coaching financial advisors, think about the lifetime gain you are actually getting. Because <clears throat> when everyone starts, I was just thinking about myself. When I talk to my clients, I'm probably saving them several thousand throughout the year. One client I convinced her to get a roommate, because if she did it, she would have been easy, she would have been well. Probably might have moved back with her parents. So also think about lifetime guarantee. I guarantee Lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> so it does compound over time. You, know, you might be paying twelve hundred now. You might be saving ten thousand easily in the whole year just by advice. Yeah, that, and then you also have someone as time goes along. So that compounding, different things are gonna pop up, different problems, different yeah. questions, like insurance questions. People get confused on this kind of insurance versus that, and. Things just come up, <clears throat> so it's easy to have somebody that you've been working with for a while because they know your situation. You can easily call them up, and just makes it a lot smoother. So uh, for the three guys or anybody else in general, um, I know that Michelle was mentioned about terms and studying certain things, and I know it would make y'all's life so much easier if we were to do a self study and be able to catch up and we understand. Instead of like, what is a 401k? Can it be a 402 point something k? And just as you know, but what, what would you recommend for kind of like a starter who has been used to working all their lives on one side of the quadrant, as you call it, and may not know about investments, but may have heard it before, but just to introduce them so that it's a leeway to you guys with financial literacy to eventually financial planning for the future, because I know how frustrating it can get from conversations from those that are steps ahead, and for us that we don't know anything about it. Recommendations of people to listen to, like our books, or something for like a beginners, not even a one-on-one, but an O-O-one. <laughs> so, because, we're, because you're dealing with also people within your family and your peers who, did, who aren't, who aren't in, even in here, and they're not even prepared to understand finances, or they're just too scared. So. Just to eliminate a little bit of fear, what would y'all recommend for books or resources? Investment for Dummies is a book. <laughs> yeah. Investment for Dummies is a book. I would start with our social media. So okay. all of our Instagrams have tons of financial information on them. So I would start there. Um, and then, you know, working in 2019, probably YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, probably just YouTube, whatever it is that you're looking for. Any particular, like, podcast that we should look for on YouTube or Videos. People, people. I think uh, it. How do I? Um, it means. <laughs> no, you go ahead. Uh, so it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, so usually, what I recommend. And I'm gonna give you an example. Uh, only this month, I did an investment summit. We had speakers come in and talked about REITs, stocks, retirement investing, cannabis investing. Kind of get an idea of what you want to really focus in on, and then you find that person. So if you want to do real estate, I know Bigger Pockets is great for real estate. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, we have, of course, all content as well. That's pretty good, too. I don't know. I buy some paper, I know. <laughs> but, no, there's a lot of good resources out there. So, like, if you want to be debt-free, um, just do hashtag debt-free community on Instagram. There's a bunch of people out there who are doing the same thing that you want to do and they're willing to help you. Uh, Dave Ramsey, I consider that a good starting point because I don't really agree with him past, like, chapter four or five. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good starting point yep. to get you in the mindset. Because, you know, mindset is probably, like, the biggest issue that most people have when it comes to financial freedom. Yeah, and to add on to that, um, I mean, you definitely, like, you have the people out there, like the Dave Ramsey's, you have Susie Orman, she's a big one, mm -hmm. um, but then definitely, yeah, you definitely want to, we put out content as well, so, like, I can speak for myself, for instance, so I'm doing Instagram, I have a YouTube channel, um, I have a podcast called Money Merlot, that's another one where I talk about finance topics, hosting workshops, um, going to events like these, this is where you can get some information, working with or partnering with someone like us so like it sounds like I keep plugging but it is what it is like, <laughs> i have a lot of stuff so i have a course that goes through all those kind of topics so i have a course in my course i talk about savings debt management the insurance investing how to make money online so like how to get have a side hustle like how to invest in songs how to just general information about you know real estate investing forex all that kind of stuff so really 
you know, reaching out to or working with someone or following someone. And I would also say too, you want to be careful about who you want to, who you follow, um, because there's so many opinions out there. It's really subjective. So you have Dave Ramsey, who's like, you can't do dead, that's the devil and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. you know, it depends, right? So everyone has their different opinions. So you kind of have to find out who works, who, who works well with you and then also look at their successes as well. Do they have clients or do they have testimonials of people who are successful with the program? So. And I think that <coughs> circles us back to the last question, which is like, yes, there's a whole lot of content out there, but who puts context to that content for you? Which is where an advisor or a financial coach comes into play. Because so you can find a lot of stuff out there, but how do you know what actually applies to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to ask a quick question. Like going back to the question earlier about prioritizing between like debt and savings and investing, would you say that that would change like over time, like based on your age? Like, um, like maybe not so much like oh, like you know, by thirty five, you should be. This is how your percentage allocation should be. But do you guys have an opinion on that? Like how the percentage would change? No, 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 not necessarily because everyone's life is different and everyone goes through different stages. And so maybe you're in your 20s and so you're trying to get down payment money and then you move into your 30s and maybe you get married and you guys get a new house and you have kids and so <coughs> it's going to change at every point. There's all those rules of thumb out there, but everyone has a different thumbprint. So it's kind of hard to say, yeah. you know, where you should be at at 35. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say just a general statement about that is like you kind of 